salvation and as we have sung I always sing that song that this is my story this is my song praising the Savior all the day long because he has made me and he has given me his salvation and I can stand secure saying that God is my Ebenezer and God is my Savior I take also this chance to welcome uh, my viewer my listener at home along the way if you are journeying somewhere or going somewhere if you are in the hospital or wherever you could be I take this chance and I thank God for giving me a chance to connect with you so that we can share the word of God together so as we move along I know God the minister the, the, the ministering spirit of God is coming to you and he'll speak to you and church you can help me also to welcome my viewer at home or wherever he is. Come on, let's, let's give a clap. <laughs> yeah. I thank God because of uh, this chance that he has given me. And indeed, our God is a, is, a, is a faithful God. And in all things, despite the happenings that are happening, either in your house, either in our country, all in the entire globe, you know that the faithfulness of God never changes. He is the one who was, he is the one who is, and he's the one who will be. Praise be to God. And today we read uh, from Psalm 77, and we also read from uh, the book of First Peter chapter 4, verse 7 to 14. And in my sermon today, I've, 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 I've given it a title on the sufficient, well, the sufficient grace of comfort of God 
the sufficient grace of God. Last week, we read about or we heard about from our vicar about the hope that we have in God. And so today, we're still reminded that when we have hope, we also rest on the grace of God. Praise be to God. And two things I have picked from, 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 from this topic is the comfort we have in God and the assurance we have in God. The comfort we have in God and the assurance we have in God. Those two things are very important when we look at the grace of God. The comfort and the assurance. And when we dwell on the comfort, we find that when we read on the book of uh, Psalms 77, we see uh, the writer uh, of the psalm who is Asaph. This particular psalm is written not by David, by the way. It is by Asaph. And we see Asaph giving a cry, a distress cry, telling God that there are so many times that he has cried to him. There are so many times that he has stayed awake. And he's like saying that intentionally God has made him to stay awake the whole night. You can't stay a whole night awake when you don't have trouble. And when you're crying in distress, it means there's something troubling you. And there are so many things that comes to our way. There are so many troubles that comes our way. There are so many waves of different kinds that may come our way. Like the wave that has come today to the entire world. The whole world, it's like it is standing still. Because there is a wave that has come and it is hitting the boat. And it is not, it is not, it is not distinguishing who, who is who. It is coming to everybody. It is coming to the poor. It is coming to the rich. It is coming to those who have political power. And it is coming to those who give those people who have political power that power. It is coming to the voters and the voted. Praise be to God. And the writer of Psalms was making a prayer of distress. And he was saying he cannot find any comfort. And so today, we are also having our distresses. And especially, as I've mentioned, about the coronavirus disease. Who knows that in your wardrobe, ungeogeza kitu inaitwa mask. In fact, none of us may be who knew that in Swahili, we call this thing barakoa. Nobody knew. Nobody knew that would come and start using these sanitizers. Nobody even knew that in Swahili, unezazita vitakaso. Nobody knew. It is because there is a wave that has come and it, has, it is making everyone to shake. It is making everyone terrified. And there are so many things that are happening. People have started experiencing deaths untimely deaths that were not expected because of this coronavirus. Those who are not getting, or I mean, those who are hospitalized, they're also getting their, they, they, they're also getting medical bills. They are charged medical bills because they were put in isolation. They were put probably in a quarantine, in a quarantine site. And those people who are not affected by the disease, Directly, they are some way somehow affected indirectly because in our homes, maybe some of us know some neighbors or some of our friends who have been having who've started having domestic violence. People are fighting in their houses because they are not used to sit together from morning to the other morning because they are not reporting to work. People, their children who are not used to see their daddies around. There are people who are not, their children who are not used to see their mummies around. And today the mummies are there giving instructions, don't do that, don't do that. The father is around telling the babies, no, that is not the way to do it. And you know there's a little pinch or there is there's a little caning. And so whatever is going in everyone's mind is some way, somehow, a distress 
and they are asking themselves so many questions that no one is able to answer. And among others are the social ills. There are so many people who have picked up habits that they never used to have. I'm sure there are parents who are crying to God that our children have turned to be drug addicts. Our children, uh, there's the, the, the recent, uh, the, the, there's the recent uh, figures that have been uh, given by the government of underage, uh, underage pregnancy. So, so many things are happening and people are asking God, where are you in this? Where are you in this? And they are hurting emotionally. Their emotions are hurting. Their hearts are having aches. They don't know what to do. But I want to tell you Christians, I want to tell you saints, that when we spend more time in prayer, God will come and lift our distresses up. He'll take all those burdens away out of us. Praise be to God. Amen. And you know the writer also di dictates some of the searching questions that I'll, we find them in verse 7, verse 6, from verse 6 and verse 7 when he says that when all these things are happening God have you left me? God have you left us? Are you still having your masses with us? Are you still having your compassion with us? Have you stopped loving us? Have you stopped your promises on us? Like what all of us today we are praying. That God, can't you see? We are hurting. We have lost our friends. We have lost our relatives. We have lost, we have lost jobs. We have lost our incomes. Our customers are no longer coming to the business. And so we are all asking those questions. But I want to remind you, my, my friend, that those who wait upon the Lord, they will never grow faint. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that he's going to renew their strength and they're going to mount on wiggles and on, on wings like eagles and they're not going to fail. Because their strength is in God. Saints, I want to tell you that we have the sufficiency of the grace of God. We, in the, we have sufficient grace of God with us. And he has given us his victory. The book of Lamentations chapter 2, chapter 3 verse 22 and verse, verse 33 and maybe I'll ask the media team to give me on the screen. The Bible says that his ten first love never ceases. And if we only know that in the grace of God is where we can find rest. Such that when the storms will come, we are able to stand them. The book of Psalms 23, verse 1 to all the way to verse 6, it gives a very profound promise. And the way we can rest in the grace of God. And it tells us that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want and that he makes me lie in pastures green and beside still waters imagine you are that hurting and the bible on the other hand is telling you that he is still your good shepherd imagine you're having all the issues that you're having and the bible is still telling you that he's leading you and making you to stand or to stay beside still waters and where the pastures are green meaning you're sitting in plenty that is what the grace of god can give you that is what the grace of god can give you if you only know that you're sitting in the sufficiency of it i'm still waiting for Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 and 23 so that we can see what the Lord tells us today. And you know most of the times 
maybe I'll also, I'll also ask this question. Are you living a life that is leaning on the sufficiency of God? Do you only trust in what you can see or touch? These are matters of faith. If you have faith, you can't exactly relate what you can see in, with your eyes, but you can relate with the eyes of faith. You can be able to see other things with the eyes of faith. And that's why I'm speaking about the sufficiency of the grace of God. That even when you're this pressed, you can still say, the Lord is my shepherd. And as we can see in Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22, that the Lord's unfailing love and mercy still continue. And the Bible says that it never comes to an end. Let's continue. Uh, that the, the, the sufficiency grace of God continues. Other verses say, other Bible versions say that it never comes to an end. Then they are as fresh as the morning, as sure as the sunrise. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Amen. There are things that we may not be sure of. But most of the times, we are sure that the sun will go down in the evening and it will rise up in the, in the morning. Those we are sure. Then that's why the writer of Lamentation said that the steadfast love of God never comes to an end. And his grace, and he renews it every morning. It is sure as a morning. Praise be to God. Amen. Let us hope in God and let us trust in God. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, it tells us that he who started good work in our hearts, he's the only one who, can, who will come to accomplish it. And so let us trust in God. Then number two is the assurance that we have in God. The assurance, because of grace, we have this assurance. And we, we, because of this assurance, we are able to face life with courage. No matter what comes our way, we are able to face life with courage. And number two, we have faith and hope raised in us. The hope that we have in God, the faith that we have in God, it is raised above high. And we can see that as the start of the Psalms that we have read, Psalms 77, it comes like a prayer. That God, that, that, that this person is making to God. Because of the distresses, because of the issues that he's going through, he's making this prayer. And so he is increasing his hope in God. He is increasing his faith in God. And he can, he's, always, he's always careful and he can be very, he can well see that there is nothing else that he has that can give him salvation other than trusting in God. And so I want to speak to you. I want to speak to you and tell you that whenever you, whatever thing that you're facing, you can go down in prayer. You can go down to your knees and you'll have your heart, you'll have your burden, you'll have anything that you're trusting God for lifted up from you and be blessed of the Lord. And in verse 16 to 20, we see the narration how the writer describes God. How God saved the children of Israel when the enemy was following them or when the enemy was almost catching up on them. Remember that Red, red, red Sea cross that they prayed. The children of Israel were going to cross the Red Sea. Behind them was the Egyptians coming for their blood. And in front of them is death. They cannot get to the Red Sea. They will get drowned. And so they were there, startled, not knowing what to do. Praise be to God. Amen. But the message of God says that we should stand still and know that the deliverance of God is with us. 
that you can still trust in God even though we are in thick and we are, we are going through thick and thin. Psalms 23 verse 4 that even though I pass through the, world, the, the shadow of death I shall not fear any evil for thou walketh with me. What an assurance God has given us that even though we walk through that valley that is full of death that there is thicket we cannot be able to see and when there is no thicket we cannot be able to walk because it is very thin and when there is no thinness we cannot be able to walk because it is all smoky we cannot see where we are stepping on but we can trust in God that where we are stepping on we are stepping on on a safe ground because we have the grace of God. First Peter chapter 4 verse 7 to 14 it has been read to us that this is the end of everything and the times has come and when it comes to the end as the Bible tells us we need to have preparations in our hearts those people who have not known to have salvation in God this is the time that we can run to God this is the time we can acquire that salvation and it is free of charge you just need to be connected to God praise be to God so let's trust in God let us know that he is the alpha and the omega of our lives he is the first and the last he's the beginning and he's the end and he who started as Philippians 1 6 says he who started good work in you will come to accomplish it praise be to God Amen. and in everything that we do remember it is not your strength that you can move on and up with remember Philippians 4 13 that I can be able to do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Paul cried when he had that thorn in his flesh. It was very painful. The way most of us we are having that thorn in us. We could not be happy, be happy have, having money to pay our rent. To buy food for our family. To provide for our family. These are that thorn that is pricking us so painfully in us. We don't know what to do. But remember the age of the Lord came to Paul and told him that my grace is sufficient on you. And so I want to tell you saints, those who are watching me and those of us who are here that the grace of God is sufficient in you. And you can be able to do, you cannot be able to walk even when things are still not promising because you have that assurance in God that the grace of God is with me. That when I go through the, the, the valley, this valley, I'll be able to go through because the hand of the Lord is leading me. And as the Psalm 23 uh, finishes, it says that surely goodness and mercies shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. So let us dwell in the house of the Lord. Let us always come to listen from the word of God. The end is near and God or Christ is coming for his church. So let us all be obedient to his word. Thank you very much and may God bless you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Uh, thank you so much, our brother, for that encouraging word. It says that God's love is eternal, and also we must have hope uh, in God. Even a time like this, when we are going through a lot of suffering, we must not lose our hope in God. For he will save us and he will keep us in his love. With this, we stand with Christian throughout the centuries and throughout the world today to affirm 
our faith in the world of the Apostles' Creed. All together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated on the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Atuombe, matuketi. Ah, buana akai nani? Natuombe. Njoli zakuaya, patuongoze wa wimbo huo. Bwana wetu alipo tufundisha tutaomba sala ya Bwana. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those sin against us. Not lead us to the test, but deliver us from evil. Thy kingdom, power, glory are yours, Father. Amen. The prayer for the day, ama ombi letu la siku. E mungu ulie mku wa amani, na mpenda mapatano, kukujua wewe ni uzima wa milele, kukutumikia wewe ni uhuru ulio kamili, utulinde sisi watumishi wako, unyenyekevu katika mashambulio ya adui zetu. Ili sisi tukutumainie, tukutumainie ulinzi wako, si ogope guvu za adui wote. E buwana, Tokuomba utusikie. Tokuomba utusikie e bora. Ombi la kuombea taifa letu. E mungu kuyatawalai mataifa yote na kuyamuru kwa mapenzi yako. Takusihi uangalie kwa rehema waku wa serikali. Rais wetu, makamu wa rais, mawaziri, mahakimu na viongozi wengine wote wa nchi yetu uwape hekma ili watumie mamlaka ulio wa kabidhi kwa ajili ya kwa ajili ya amani ya dunia na kwa heshima na ustawi wa taifa hili na kwa wema wa kanisa lako takatifu e Mungu tukuomba utusikie tukuomba utusikie e Bwana ombi la kuombea kanisa letu Mwenyezi Mungu uishie milele ambaye peke yako hutenda miujiza uwape roho ya neema maaskofu wa tukutambue tukitambua askofu wetu Joseph na familia yake makasisi na mashemazi wa lei wetu na watu wote waliokabidhiwa uamiminie baraka zako kama umande ili wakupendeze kwa kweli na watu wako wote uwa Karmie neema yako ya mbinguni na hasa wanaoshiriki nasi katika ibada hii na hata wale walio katika manyumbani ili kwa mioyo yao na iba, mioyo yao ibada wa, walisikie na kulipokea neno lako takatifu 
wa kutumikie kwa kweli katika uta, katika utakatifu na haki siku zote za maisha yao. E Bwana, tukuomba utusikie. Tukuomba utusikie e Bwana. Ah, uh, also this is our prayer during this uh, uh, pandemic period. Oh God, the comfort of our soul, the strength of suffering. Let our prayer come unto thee for, for these who are great in need and in stress. Visit them with your tender love and, and pity and help them to face their trials with fortitude and hope. Be their strength and their shield. Lighten their darkness and make known to them the present and, and guide them by their spirit. May the love and may the love and help reach them through all those who are seeking uh, to help them. And do and and though, O oh Lord, minister to them as no man being as no human being uh, can ever do. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We all join to the prayer for St. Chrysostom, all together. Almighty God, by your grace, we have come together at this time to bring our united prayers to you. And you have promised by your Son, Jesus Christ, that when two or three are gathered in your name, you'll be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O oh Lord, our desires and petition, as may be best for us granting us this world's knowledge of your truth and the world to come life everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen uh, It is time for our offertory and I will request the choir to give us a song or a hymn for the offertory Yes so we do our offertory through the pay bill or the M-Pesa or we can also do it uh, through banking but for those who are here in the service we have this basket rest there. for those who are at home that is our number we have the pay bill number and also we have the account number kindly do so Lord bless you him is Chakutumaini Sina na tu
kushukuru kwa sababu ya sadaka e Mungu muumba na uhifadhi vitu vyote kwa shukrani tunakutolea wewe kwa kazi yako mazao ya bia, biashara na kazi zetu ikubali na uibariki sadaka hii iliyotolewa na watumishi wako kwa uendelezaji wa kazi yako hapa na kwingineko bariki watu wako katika kazi zao za kila siku thibitisha kazi zao ili watosheleze mahitaji yao mbalimbali kwa utukufu na heshima kwa jina lako takatifu tunaomba na hata kuamini thank you for attending church today I believe we are encouraged and uh, may the Lord meet you uh, may the Lord meet you to your point of need and even our viewer uh, who is watching us wherever you are watching us Mungu akuonekanie katika mambo yako yote na kutendee mema wacheni tuombe We thank you so so much O oh Lord for your love care and tender grace that Lord you have given us O oh God Thank you Father because Lord as we set our feet out of this sanctuary oh God we are walking people who are full of hope and people who are resting on your grace oh God and as we go oh Lord we pray Father that Lord you order our steps oh Jehovah and that Lord where there seems to be no way oh God may you make a pure a beautiful way for us oh God Lord when we don't know what to do next oh Jehovah Lord come and strengthen us O oh God and give us the grace to move on. We pray this believing and trusting in Jesus name. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace and let us serve the Lord wherever we will be. Amen. Recession of him. Uh, our recession of him to be led by the choir. Thank you.